In this video, we'll be taking a look at the random forest algorithm. The random forest algorithm is composed of many decision trees. For those of you who need a quick recap on what decision trees are, suppose that we had a bucket of fruit. So let's say we had an orange, a apple, and some cherries. Here you go, I know I'm bad at drawing, but... Um, and we wanted to sort these. Well, what we could do is we could ask a question. So for example, is the diameter greater or equal to three centimeters? And then if it's false, then it would go in this bucket, so the cherries would go in here. And then if it were true, the orange and apple would go in here. And then again, we would ask another question like, uh, is it orange? And these would get sorted in their own buckets as well. And so in the random forest algorithm, you have multiple of these decision trees. And essentially, whenever we get a new piece of fruit, so let's say we have our mystery fruit right here, and we use our decision trees to determine uh, what kind of fruit it is. So let's say our mystery fruit ended up here. We would say it were an apple. Well, let's say in the decision tree here, it determined using different questions that our mystery fruit was an orange. Well, then all these different decision trees are computing some kind of prediction and we end up taking and going with the majority. And so I'm going to stop the video here. And then when I come back, we will implement the algorithm using Python. So like always, we're going to want to start off by importing the libraries. And so from sklearn.datasets, we are going to import the load iris function and then from the sklearn dot ensemble library we're going to import the random forest classifier from the sklearn dot model selection we are going to import the train test split from the sklearn.metrics module, we're going to import the confusion matrix function. And then we're going to import pandas as pd and numpy as np. All right, so first we're going to load our data set, and I will display it. Come on. There you go. All right. So I know it's not that clear here, but essentially we have our target names, which are our classes. So essentially this data set is um, composed of three different kinds of irises. So you have Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. And um, the features, I'll just show you guys in a sec. So if we do iris.feature names, we have the sepal length, sepal width, the petal length, and then the petal width. And so what we'll do is we will create a data frame 
and we'll call it x and we're going to pass it the iris.data which is the values of the features and then for the columns we are going to use the feature names like so and then for y we're going to create categorical data and we are going to pass it the values for our targets and their names, like so. Target, there we go. All right, so then just quickly, if I show the head for X, you can see we have a nice table like that. And then if I showed Y, you can see that we have the classifications for the different irises. So whenever you are working with categorical data, you're going to want to encode it because um, obviously our machine learning models don't really work well with words or strings. And so we're going to use one hot encoding. Um, so to do that, we'll do one hot encoded y is equal to pd dot get dummies and we'll pass in y and then if I just printed that quickly you can see now that whenever it's Satosa the first digit in our um, list here will be a 1 and then if it's Versicolor the second one will be a 1 and then if it's a Virginica it'll be a 1 on the last digit. So now what we're going to want to do is to split our data set into the training and the test set. So the point of machine learning models is to get it to predict new data. And so we want to set aside data to verify that our model is doing a good job of classifying new data and that it's not just overfitting to our training data. And so to do that, we'll do train x and then test x, train y, and test y is going to be equal to the train test split. And we're going to pass in x, one hot encoded y. And then we're also going to pass in a random state. Um, this is just so that we'll get the same value every time. And by default, it will set aside 25% of our data for testing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create our model. So random forest model is equal to random forest classifier. So, and now we're going to go ahead and train it using our training data. And so we're going to pass in it, pass it in train X and train Y. We're passing it train Y here because this is a supervised machine learning algorithm. And so we need to tell it what the correct classifications are. Random forest classifier. Oh, whoops. Dot fit. Sorry. Uh, fit here is synonymous to train. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use our model to predict the categories given the features in our uh, testing set. And so random forest test dot predictions is going to be equal to RF model dot predict. And then we're going to pass in test X. So normally, if this were a regression problem, we would use our 
loss functions to determine the accuracy of our model, but because this is classification, we're going to have to use what's called a confusion matrix. And essentially what a confusion matrix is, is it, uh, if you think of a pregnancy test, it tells you whether you got a false positive or not. And so before we can uh, create our confusion matrix, we're going to have to convert our one hot encoded values back to um, not to words, but numbers. And so to do that, we'll do numpy.array will pass in our test set and then you take arc max axis equals one and if I just printed that to show you guys you can see here that now the two corresponds to the third class of virus I forget what it's called and then one the second and vice versa and we're gonna have to do the same thing for our predictions Um, graph test predictions, arc max axis equals one. Now we can create our confusion matrix by passing in the species and the predictions. So the way you interpret this is essentially everything on the diagonal is a correct prediction, and then everything that's not is incorrect. So you can see here that we got roughly 37 out of 38 predictions correct. And um, I forget what that is. That's roughly 97.3% accuracy, which is pretty good. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll uh, be sure to put this up on GitHub. Cheers.